Mr. Speaker, Prime Minister Lee first announced in his National Day Rally speech on August 2022 that Section 377A would be repealed. Since then, this matter has been deeply debated by members of the public as well as members of this House. Based on my interactions with my friends, colleagues, union leaders and members, I have gathered that there are sentiments of worry and unhappiness among Singaporeans on this topic, despite the many engagement sessions carried out earlier involving various groups of leaders and fellow Singaporeans. We have heard today, yesterday, from more than 20 MPs and NMPs on this thorny and sensitive subject matter. I am heartened by the passion and conviction of the various speeches by the members of this House and their commitment to safeguard the natural institution of marriage and family structure as reiterated by many. On the other hand, I am also comforted knowing that we are according the necessary space to those who had previously felt oppressed by the existence of Section 377A in our books. I would like to thank both Minister Masagos for his explanation on the implications of the insertion of a new Article 156 into our Constitution with regards to marriage, as well as Minister Shamugam's explanation on the importance of repealing Section 377A in this House instead of being struck down by the Court. In fact, many in our society may not have known that prior to this announcement, there have been constitutional challenges filed in court against Section 377A on the basis that it violates the Constitution. BM Lee also mentioned during his National Day Rally speech that the Attorney General and Minister of Law have advised that in the future court challenge, there is a real risk of Section 377A being struck down. Sir, our union members and fellow workers are also residents of all the MPs here. They too shared their concerns with me, either in person, over calls, messages, or even emails. I have received emails from multiple individuals and groups calling for the retention of Section 377A. This view is commonly held by more conservative and or religious groups as they are concerned with what the repeal of Section 377A represents, that there would be an erosion of so there would be an erosion of family values and the traditional definition that marriage is between a man and a woman could be challenged. There is also another view that the government should not intervene nor police private and social and sexual behaviors between consulting between consenting adults. Accordingly, it should be removed from our books, especially if the government will not actively enforce it. With all being said, I hope the government can enlighten lay persons like myself on the relevant processes for legislative and policy reforms. Under what circumstances would the court be empowered to strike down the laws passed by parliament? What can be done by parliament to avoid the striking down of the laws? Should the matter be canvassed before Parliament, for Parliament to consider repealing the same first? What is the difference between these two processes? Can an infographic illustrate these processes to make it easier for people out there to understand? Nevertheless, I am glad that this issue is canvassed before us presently, as such a law which has far-reaching implications on Singapore's family structure and societal norms should be decided by Parliament, which has the people's mandate and not the courts, which only interpret and apply laws passed at the Parliament. At the same juncture, I applaud the government's decision of introducing Article 156 into our Constitution. Article 156.2 provides that the government and public authorities may, in exercising their executive authority, protect, safeguard, support, foster, and promote the institution of marriage. This is wholly consistent with what most Singaporeans want, which is to maintain the current family and social norms where marriage is between a man and a woman and children are brought up in a such a family structure. We hope that the existing measures such as public housing policies 
and financial benefits for married couples as well as education and media policies continue to promote and safeguard the institution of marriage. So I will now speak in Malay. Tuan Speaker, perbincangan kita berkenaan pemansuhan Section 377 dan perubahan pada pelambangan negara telah menarik perhatian di kalangan masyarakat kita. Tidak kira bangsa dan agama, ramai yang melahirkan kebimbangan tentang cara kehidupan masyarakat kita sekiranya permansuhan Seksyen 377 ini diluluskan. Sedihnya, ramai tak sedihnya tak ramai yang beri perhatian yang sama akan pemindahan perlembagaan dengan penambahan Artikel 156 yang menerangkan serta mengukuhkan definisi perkahwinan dan keluarga. Ramai yang bertanya-tanya apakah pemerintah bersetuju dengan perbuatan golongan sedemikian sehingga akur dan tunduk pada permintaan mereka. Kita semua sedar akan kemunculan semula golongan seperti serupa ini dan ia amat membimbangkan buat masyarakat kita sekarang dan pada masa hadapan. Pemansuan akta ini boleh dilihat sebagai kejayaan kecil buat golongan ini. Apakah mungkin di masa hadapan mereka akan terus membuat permintaan yang lebih atas dasar hak asasi yang sama untuk semua masyarakat? Apakah pemerintah akan juga menyokong dan mengizin sama seperti keadaan sekarang? Memang tidak salah untuk melahirkan kebimbangan. Namun kita harus akur bahawa dunia ini milik semua makhluk ciptaan daripada manusia, haiwan, gunung ganang, tumbuh-tumbuhan dan selebihnya yang tak mampu kita hitung. Golongan seperti ini juga manusia biasa macam kita juga. Kita wajar kongsi bersama ke lapangan dunia ini sama seperti semua ciptaan Tuhan. Janganlah kita asingkan mereka hanya kerana keadaan nafsu mereka berlainan dengan kita. Sebarkan sifat rahmah di kalangan manusia dan mengenali cabaran mereka. Mereka tidak pernah minta untuk dalam ke mereka tidak pernah minta untuk berada dalam keadaan sedemikian. Tetapi kita yang mengaku diri kita waras dan siuman harus memainkan tugas menasihati dan berkongsi dengan mereka fitrah kehidupan sebenar. Ayo kita tanamkan sikap hormat menghormati bukan menghukum atas dasar perbezaan pendapat, pendirian serta kepercayaan masing-masing. Kita harus elakkan dari menyebarkan fitnah yang boleh memecah belakang masyarakat kita. Perpaduan harmoni dalam masyarakat yang telah lama dibina atas dasar hormat menghormati harus dijaga dan diperkasakan. Bersatu teguh bercerai robo. So I am sure that the repeal of the section 377A will bring some form of relief and comfort to those who had previously felt oppressed by the same in knowing that our societal norms have shifted and we as a society are ready to accept and grant them the space needed. In my personal view, the government has arrived at a nice balance, granting homosexuals the space that they need through the repeal while recognizing and upholding the traditional definition of marriage through the constitutional amendments. In, in closing, I echo what our Prime Minister said at the National Day Rally, that we must maintain the mutual respect and trust that we have painstakingly built up over the years and stay united as one united people. I stand by and support the decision to repeal Section 377A, as well as amendment to the Constitution, because every human matters. I also call on fellow workers and employers to treat every worker equally regardless of their gender, because every worker matters. Thank you.